I know Mr. Herb White had some, some family issues too, so um, I'll give him a call and we'll see if we can uh, get him in. We might have to do a call with him because uh, we really want to um, discuss the pond, the condition of the pond. Okay, uh, next on the agenda is Mr. Bill Hatfield um, of AFLAC. And Mr. Bill Hatfield is also a councilman over at Asher. And uh, if we can give Mr. Hatfield our full attention. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council, it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the uh, time that you've given me tonight to discuss something that has become increasingly more and more important uh, over the past couple of years, which is employee benefits. Um, I know that with the institution of Obamacare, uh, benefits have become a huge concern for not only employers, but employees as well. Um, we have recently, in the past two weeks, been working with the employees of the city, as y'all know, to provide some of the individual policies that AFLAC offers um, that covers everything from accidents to short-term disability to hospitalization policies and things of that nature. Um, AFLAC um, covers excuse me, medical and non-medical non expenses for uh, employees if they are hurt in an accident, sick, and they go to a hospital, um, as well as short-term disability to cover the loss of income while they are out, out of work. <clears throat> Pardon me. And some of the discussions that I've been having, I kind of noticed that there was, a, there was several ways that AFLAC can benefit not only the city employees, but also the city itself. One of those areas is in, in two particular policies that I'd like to discuss tonight, which is an accident indemnity advantage policy, as well as a term life insurance policy. Um, the reason that we feel that these two policies would be very beneficial to the employees, of course, is it offers some life insurance policy. Um, what we're looking at is about a 10-year term policy for a $25,000 face amount. And that's to uh, Number one, offer life insurance to those who don't have any currently, but also add some additional to those who may have some because variable expenses are, are increasing uh, every day. The other policy that we're looking at is an accident indemnity advantage policy, which covers, excuse me, the employees 24 hours a day, seven days a week, anywhere they are, any day, time, any country that they're in. Okay? Um, one, of the, one of the things that we have seen as a company with AFLAC is more and more employers and municipalities are offering to um, pay a portion of benefits for the accident policy because for one reason it helps reduce your workers comp liability. Okay? What, what we're seeing is a trend of employees who are covered 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, they get hurt instead of filing a workers comp they've been following on, on AFLAC and it's to save the, the workers' comp uh, claims. Because okay? the AFLAC's paying for that in the workers' comp. Um, with that being the case, those two policies, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I'm recommending tonight is that we take a look at what we call a pre-tax plan. Um, some people call it a 125 cafeteria plan for the city. And what that will do is allow the employees to take those benefits as a pre-tax dollar instead of an after-tax dollar. Now what does that exactly mean in language terms? Is that instead of them taxing their income and then taking the benefit out, what they do is take the benefit from the gross and then tax it with the lower amount. So it equates to more money on the bottom line of the net pay of the employee, but it also offers the employer, which would be the city in this case, tax deduction because it would look it would be set up on a pre-tax plan. So it would be like the employee themselves trading a tax for their own benefit. Instead of paying the a federal tax, they would just pay for their own benefit. If that makes any sense. In doing that, um, we certainly have have examples of um, where employers have saved up to $30,000, just depending on the contributions. One of the things that we have looked at and, and what I've put together for you in a package to each of you is not only uh, what the 
the advantages to have like is and what we actually do, along with there's a thing in there called wingspan, which explains the cafeteria plan and how that works. But the next page, I've actually broken down the accident policy as well as the term life policy. Um, the accident policy, as you can see, the base price of the policy per pay period on a bi-weekly basis is $12.24, which equates to a yearly cost of about $318.24. Um, if we take the, uh, if the city were to look at a proposal of paying, say, half of that policy for the employee, that would equate to about $265.20 a month for all 20 employees of the city. Okay. That's 50%, correct? Yes, sir. That's 50% of the cost. Um, and the term life policy, um, I base the figures on 38 years of age um, with satisfactory health, which and take a look at everything. It looks like everybody in good shape, which is good. Um, would be about $3.85 every two weeks, bi-weekly, which would equate now to uh, half of that policy being paid by the city. The city would see a participation in the plan of $83.42 a month for all 20 employees, <coughs> uh, which would take the total of $348.62 a month, um, which would take care of all 20 employees. When we're talking when we're talking 20 employees or we're, we're taking into account the uh, volunteers and the fire department for that. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. That was my understanding with the fire department. There were 20 employees. Um, this does not at all limit um, the city's ability to um, look at other plans. It doesn't limit um, who can be on the plan. If if we need to add or you know, anything like that, we can certainly do so. It doesn't limit the scope of, of, of who can participate. So this is based on 20 employees. If, um, say, uh, someone on council wanted to pay the full uh, price, I mean, just pay at yes, the they could do so? Yes, sir. And what about family members of uh, employees? We do have a family plan itself. I did not price that in here because I was looking at individual plans. Um, the family plans are on a few dollars higher than what we're talking about here. It's not exorbitant. So it would be where they could just pay this price um, and not more bodies, so to speak. The price would remain the same, correct? Yes, sir. We, we, Affleck has been in business since 1954. We've never had a problem. So once a policy is in effect, that premium stays the same. Now they do change policies here and there, as far as upgrading policies, making them better, stronger, um, and there may be an increase in prices for those particular policies. But once those policies are in place, unless you choose to change it, they're on the policy. They're on the rate increases. So if um, the fire chief's wife wanted to pay full out of pocket for um, term life policy. How would that affect the price that was quoted here? How, how, would you, how would you calculate that out? Well, if it's a situation, we have two ways that we could go with that life policy, okay? We could either take a look at the 10-year term life for him, which would be 5,000 on the face amount, or we could only do half for her. We could add a spousal lighter for her, and she would have half the coverage of the 25,000, okay? Um, or we could look at doing her a policy for herself, which would be outside of the group of the, the city. Would that be she, she would not be a city it would be a right. week at all. Well, what would be the benefit for someone to do that? Is there a benefit to have somebody already who has the term policy and to have the spouse come on? Is there a benefit for them? Is there a there is. better cost? Is it is it it, it, it is a better cost for them because they're part of a group rate. Um, when you look at policies outside of a group rate, um, you're looking at typically a higher premium. Uh, by doing something like a spousal a rider on this, that would give them coverage at a cheaper price, but it would be a lower premium. So if you were looking to, because law dictates to us that we can only offer half on a rider what the primary has. Um, so, 
it would be a benefit to them because they would be paying a little bit extra money for the style of lighter for coverage that, that, that the same coverage would be a little more expensive for them if they, if they got them on the outside. Have you talked with any of our employees? Yes, sir, I have. Have any of them availed themselves to this? Yes, sir. I, I have actually spoken with uh, most of the, the executive, the, um, the employees here uh, in City Hall and the maintenance worker. I haven't spoken, I, I've spoken with the um, fire chief, mm -hmm. um, and he's very interested in taking a look at what's going on and being able to offer that to, to the uh, firefighters as well. Um, but everyone here has had a, had a very positive response and, and uh, very interested in, in taking other policies in addition to the accident and the line. Well, I want to have you had anybody <coughs> right, uh, accept the policies? Or yes, sir. The officers? Okay. Yes, sir. We, we've already had um, five policies. Five individuals who have already signed that um, and you know they're just more than <coughs> if the, the city participates as well. Um, but we've had a huge response um, with this. Everybody's you know, happy with the coverages. Um, a lot of them didn't know it, was <coughs> which is it's kind of nice to be able to explain to them what we do. So there are five individuals right now in the city that have an active policy. Yes, sir. But they're, they're individuals that are paying full, full price, right? They're individuals that are paying the full price, right? And I wasn't aware of anybody that was on the policy. I had, I had an athletic for a long, for a long while, a while here. Had to use it once, and it paid like that. I didn't have to pry the money out of it. I am satisfied with that. Right? That's one of the things we pride ourselves on, is to make sure the phones are paid for the time and time. Um, let me see if I, I have this right. You said it would save us on uh, workman's comp by reducing the number of claims that we go so we keep our, our numbers low. It doesn't offset it in any other way, correct? I mean, it's just by uh, the claim that it actually go to AFLAC if it's a workman's comp, an accident claim. But what, right, what we have found is that, that employers who have instituted AFLAC businesses and have taken part. What ends up happening is the employees themselves that they can hurt, hurt the first thing they think of is that claim. We call it um, and, and we submit a claim and most of the time once that claim submitted and they're paid, we never get anything out of it. So that's kind of how some of the employers have, have maintained their workers' comp um, levels and kept the claims down. Half like that doesn't pay on the same level as workers' comp. It depends on the accident. It depends on what happened. Um, for example, an accident policy, I've seen an accident policy pay as much as $7,500,000. Um, because not only do they pay individual benefits for whatever happens and whatever the doctor does, they get a benefit just for seeing the doctor. They get a benefit for um, every x-ray that's, that's taken. They get a lump sum benefit depending on what the severity of the accident is. So the more severe the one lump sum amount is. Um, they pay for rehabilitation services, they pay for follow-up visits, they pay for transportation. Um, if if you uh, have to see a specialist for some reason, they pay uh, round trip transportation costs. They pay for hotel expenses. Um, they pay for everything from crutches and slings to the but not hospital bill. The hospital bill itself they do not because AFLAC pays the individual employee. It does not pay the hospital. So it would be like a, like a supplemental policy. Right. Correct. Yes, sir. And they can file for both workman's comp and AFLAC at the same time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One of the ways, just to, to answer your question there, it, it is not major medical insurance to take care of Obamacare or any of those those uh, demands or, or mandates. <coughs> However, what it has done that we've seen is um, deter the cost or help with the cost of the higher deductibles and higher co-pays. Because what people are doing is now that they have 
the insurance premiums have, have increased and so have the deductibles and co -pays. And what we're finding is they're filing an affluent more readily, getting the money for that so they can pay the deductibles and co -pays. So it's all setting those, those increases. Bill, if, if somebody has an accident and they know they can file an affluent and, and work in comp, and that's still going to affect work in comp, numbers towards the city? They very well could. I, I can't sit here and tell you because I'm not, I don't sell the workers' comp. Because the work, workers' comp pays out a claim that that hits your numbers. It does. It does. So, and how severely it'll hit your numbers depending on you know, what they decide to do there. So, um, I'm Insurance as well, any insurance. Um, if, you know, 
Kajin Yang has and you're covered by Company B, there's a, an arrangement that they're not going to, you're not going to collect from both. That's nothing to do with that. Like, I have my pays regardless. So, if our witness comp carrier finds out that Aflac paid on this accident, paid whatever, then you're saying they cannot subrogate and come back to collect that from our employee. That's my understanding. Okay. That's my understanding. Okay. Um, so <coughs> I'd love to be able to stand here and, and be yeah. the, the expert on that, but I just, I, I'm not there uh, with the workers' comp. Not too far away from medical insurance. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. If, uh, if somebody else pays out on the, on the health plan, the Medicare, and say, well, uh, well, you've already received this amount of money, and that satisfies us, regardless of who's paying it. Um, so that, that's a concern. I have another question. Um, these, uh, these quotes that you have on the participation in, in the term life and the accident <coughs> of, is one quote contingent on the other one? Or um, if, we, if, someone, if we just want to go with the term life policy, that quote? the same quote we're reading the same. So, so it's based on two different policies. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not based on the package. It's on the package. Okay. Um, one of the things that I will say um, and, and maybe this will help a little bit is AFLAC are individual policies. So they're not they don't necessarily belong. I kind of equate it to if you have two life insurance policies. Well, if one pays out, the other's going to pay off too if you're going to be passed away because it's an individual policy. It's not, it doesn't necessarily belong to the institution or the city or the company. I understand what you're saying. I don't know that it belongs to the I'm not sure that the life insurance really equates to accident and health insurance. I mean, it's you're on a slippery slope, and so I'm, I'm not saying what you're saying is not true, but I, I just have a lot of experience of sure. having been insured by multiple policies over the years and how the coordination of benefits work. And, you know, it's a nightmare for the employee or the policyholder trying to get all that balanced out. And your example of Medicare is right on, you know. Also, so, also you're mixing state with private, and that's a whole you know, ball of wax versus two private um, um, policies from two private companies. When you're working with workman's comp, then, then you're dealing with, you know, the state, the state acts a little different. Than that. Yeah. Well, the workers comp, to be quite honest with you, we're often such a totally different animal, right? Um, than what I do. Right. Yeah, my, my main focus is to help offset some of the costs that the employees incur by either higher premiums or something of that nature, higher, higher um, deductibles of coverage, and offer some coverage to those who don't have any. Uh, you know, the event that's such a time. So this quote, if we only had seven employees that were interested, is this quote still good, or is it half good? No, ma'am, the quote would be good with seven people. Would it be good with two? two. Well, three, because we need three people to make a group, which we've already made the group right. with the city, so. Um, you already have five doing it. Correct. So already there. Correct. So the group has already been made. Um, what does employees leave? What happens then? They either have the option of continuing. No, no, no. What happens to us if we fall under that minimum number? No, no, no. So we can go down to one. We can go down to one. We have to start with a minimum of three. We can go down to one. I think that's what we had here for one time. You might have been the one. The one. The one. And it pays on the top of whatever uh, working comp pays. Working comp does not drop in its, any of its uh, payouts. No. And this is paid on the top of whatever uh, working comp pays. I know it helped me get through because I, I work for about six months. Right. It pays. <coughs> and, and I'm not saying that, that AFLAC is going to replace workers' comp. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that with the employers that we have put this policy in the place where they may have experienced a decrease in their clients. So, so you have a question, the term life policy, 10-year term, what happens in 10 years? 
it, they will have to um, renew it, but, it's, but it is guaranteed um, converted. So they don't have to do it again. Right. They'll just be right. 10 years older and be subject to a higher premium. Correct. That, that they'll pay it the whatever age they are 10 years from now. But they will not well, have to go through underwriting process or have this. And what happens if an employee signs up and the city pays the premium and the employee doesn't pay their part? Well, what we've done is we've set it up as a payroll deduction. So, so their part choice. will be deducted from their pay. From their so we have firemen that mm -hmm. may or may not get a check and they don't pay it. That's a good question. Um, <laughs> it's, it's my understanding, and if, and if I'm not correct, are they paid on a quarterly basis? They're paid for training. If someone doesn't show up training, they get So if their job prohibits them from coming or if they're sick, they're not going to get the, the payment of it. So you may have a situation where a farmer would have a, a payment. Right. And what we would do in that, in that circumstance is you would cross the city would get an invoice from Apple like every month. Um, you would just cross through their name. And that tells us they're no longer there. You won't be billed for it. You just send them. No, 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 no. That's, that's, <laughs> not, that's not exactly what I'm saying. There, what I'm saying times. is they may not get paid for training. They're still a volunteer fireman. They may miss the meeting this month, but next month they, they make it because they're volunteers. They have other jobs and sometimes, right. or they're on a fire or whatever, and they don't get paid. So um, they're not no longer employed. They just didn't get the check because they couldn't make training. How would they pay their portion if uh, there was nothing to deduct? Because uh, they would get a check and they wanted to continue. How would they make their, their contribution? They could either, hey, you come, come in and make a, make a payment to the city and let the city send the, send the money in with the invoice when it's due. And if or they don't, they just draw a warning. Correct. And, and, if and if they're not living up to that, then you can cancel that at any time and not have to pay for Could you say? Could you set up different classes of employees as far as the employee, the employer contribution part, where the city would contribute to full-time paid employees, sure. but not volunteers? The program would be available to volunteers if they wanted to pay in, but the city wouldn't have it. So you, so you can sure. set up different classes of employees. So sure. this, this would be a plan that we would work together to come up with. And if you decided that you, you, you wanted to to offer it to volunteers or even council members and say they wanted to pay for it themselves, they could do that. Um, and say that all the full-time employees contribute this money, you know, however that you'd like to set it up. It's up to the discretion of the city. What other cities in Lowndes County have offer at like? Valdosta, um, Hey Hi. Um, Nashville. Dasher. Nashville. Dasher. Uh, Dasher we do not because we, we only have one part-time employee <coughs> with the city. Everybody else is council members. So uh, we don't have it as a city simply because we can get it ourselves. Um, but pretty much every, every municipality is carrying that plot. How soon would you have to know for this? What I'm thinking, you're here for the decision to take up half the payment, right? Actually, is that what you're asking for? Of, of those two policies, yes. Sir. Um, any any additional policies that act like offers mm -hmm. um, would just be completely 100% on the board. Um, the cancer policy. The cancer policy would be short-term disability policy. As, as of now, the five people that you have, they're paying their own, right? Yes, sir. Is it payroll deducted? Yes, sir. Everyone will be payroll deducted. Um, AFLAC offers two, two ways of doing things. And one is on the end of the day, which could be deducted from their, their bank account. The other is payroll deduction through their company um, or, or their employer. Um, by going through their employer and having a payroll deducted, they bring them cut in half of what normally would. So that's that's kind of the premium difference. 
Can I suggest that we uh, do a work session on this and uh, try to cut through some of this and figure out where we stand? Um, we have the information in front of us, and uh, we can uh, we can set a date to sit down and figure a closer look at this. <coughs> I'll make a motion we move for a work session at your at the council's convenience. No. Do you want to set a date for that or Mr. Mayor, you keep keep charge of that I mean. Well What's your schedule? Pick a day. Pick a day? How's Monday the uh, 16th look? That's fine with me. I'm sure we'll have a few other things to discuss about that one. Plus, uh, we'll have to when is that? Is it on the 16th? Yeah. Is it the 16th? It's the 9th, right? It's the 9th. Okay. That's good. So the 16th at 7th. Uh, <coughs> So what we'll do is we'll uh, put the power on that and we'll get back to the show. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate, appreciate your time. And uh, any questions, my card is in there. I'd be happy to accompany you. Let me know where you're at. All right, thank, thank you. Man.